the Imperfect Gardener here with a few tips on removing grass um, to make your garden bigger. Um, I have my garden growing, or, well it's not growing yet, but I have it all tilled. Yay, look, I tilled over there. But I have this section that, I don't know, I've got so much growing that I want to grow this year and try some new things. I wanted to have a little more space and it just so happened that we had a lot of brush that we had to burn last week, a couple of weeks ago actually. Um, so I said, hey, if I want to clear some more grass, what's an easy way? <laughs> Throw all the brush in the middle of the, yard, of the yard there and burn it up. So that's what I did. Um, if I can get back a little farther. So we had this big burn area. It was about six, six feet crossed, I guess. Kind of a circle. So we burned that stuff. And then I just uh, took away any that was big stuff. But mostly you could just till that ash in there. It's not a problem. It's actually good for the garden to have a little ash in it. So I tilled that in some, but then I have the section over here that's still, you know, in the way. Um, I might leave this one border here because it's a whole nother story of big stuff that's been layered up on there and there's plastic under it. It's a long story. But anyway, um, I do want to have this section to get some corn, grow some corn in over here, uh, a little patch of corn. So I've been pulling up the grass by hand. You can see a pile over there, all that brown stuff. Over there is grass that I have pulled up already. And uh, the way that I have found easy to do it, if you're doing it by hand, is I took my shovel and I went across like this, down with the shovel, you know, of course, with your, with your foot on it. And, of course, after it has rained yesterday, um, if the ground is dry, you're going to kill yourself <laughs> trying to dig up grass. So the ground is nice and moist. Um, if you know you're going to dig some grass up and it hasn't been raining, then I suggest you soak it real good with the hose the night before. makes it so much easier to dig into that earth and to pull the, the grass up. So I do it. I've seen people try to roll it up. I think getting down there and pushing along and trying to roll it is actually hard because you keep having to pull those roots and pull those roots by hand if you're rolling it. If you dig here on this side and go ahead and give it a little push up like that when you do it, dig in on this side and push up the dirt a little bit like that. Then you can take your shovel and get it underneath. So that's what I did down here. I've already done the sides, both sides. Then you can take your shovel and go like this and get it underneath here. Now, it's hard to do with camera in your hand, but then I basically get it under there, which I'm not strong enough to do this with it, and you pull it up and then I flip it. Um, which I can do with two hands, I can't do with one. But basically the grass goes like this and flips over this way. The purpose of that is, I can show you right here. This is the grass that I have flipped over from this section right here, flipped it over here. I don't want to just lug this out of here. First of all, it's heavy. But secondly, I like the dirt. I don't want to get rid of all that dirt. And so by just flipping it like this, I can take my shovel, loosen the dirt up, and do this. Just beat on it, basically, with your shovel. Easier with two hands, of course. I'm just using one right now. Okay, so you beat on it real good a few times. And that way, you can either take your shovel and scrape across it. See, all this dirt needs to come back in to the hole in the ground because otherwise I'm taking all my topsoil away, which I don't want to do. Depends on how much topsoil you have, but some people don't have much. And you don't want to get rid of that. So I beat it a few times. Then once I'm done beating it, then you can just reach down there. If you had your glove on, it'd be helpful, of course, to uh, do it with a glove on. Sorry I'm trying to do this with the camera in my hand. It's kind of crazy, but I'm tired. Um, then you get a piece, lift it up, then you can just give it a shake and get the rest of the dirt out. And then I'm throwing it over there for now, kind of upside down into a pile, because eventually I want to kill this grass too right here. So I'm going to throw this on top of that grass so that when I come back out here to do a little more work, maybe in a week, a bunch of that grass will be dead under there. And that will help me to pull it up. So here's another chunk. You just grab a hold of it and lift it up. Two hands is usually easier, but now you give it a shake, and since you've loosened it, it says all oh, this dirt's going to come out of there. Sometimes it breaks, and I get a little piece, but... Um, you can also hit it against your shovel, too. Take the shovel, just beat it on there if you need to. Just get a bunch of that dirt off. That way you are saving the dirt. Here's another piece. 
The only thing that you don't want left in here are the roots. So I'll show you, I'm gonna shake some off. And now that I can see, once I get it shaked off well, I can see all these roots in here. See, that's all hairs and roots from the, from the grass. That is what I don't want in here. That is the good thing about doing this, is you're getting all the roots out. I have a rototiller sitting here, but if I use this rototiller to just till over this grass and till it into the earth, that grass is going to grow back a lot. And I'm still going to have to be picking at it um, all summer trying to get it out. So basically, now these little pieces that fall, that's dead grass. That's not going to grow any more grass. What grows more grass is the roots. Um, and I'm getting the whole root system out. Now, I've been working on this little section. I did right down there. Right about here was where the, where the fire was that I burned some. And so this section coming down here, it's probably about three feet by, I don't know, however long this is. Yeah, three feet by 10 feet or 12 feet. And it's probably taken me a good 30, 40 minutes, but I move slow. Now, it's probably only been 30 minutes. I move kind of slow and easy because I don't want to kill myself. You're going to hear me huffing and puffing. Uh, but if I do that slow and easy, like every night this week, next thing you know, I'm going to have a little corn patch here. Okay? Um, I'm not going to come out and do this all in one sitting because it'll be too hard for me. Um, so the thing, good thing about it is that's why I'm planning to put my corn over here because I already have all of this earth ready. Look at that. It goes on and on. It's like the back 40, I call it now. Look at that. It's pretty. That's all ready. And I'm going to rake it up and start planting way down there at the end with my uh, early season things uh, in a few, couple of weeks. Not even a couple of weeks, like one week when May comes. Um, but corn can't go in in Michigan until the end of May when you're sure there's no frost left and the ground is definitely very warm. So if I come out and pull a little of this up even once a week or a couple of times a week, come out and pull some grass until I'm huffing and puffing and then take a break so I don't, you know, have a heart attack or something, <laughs> then next thing you know, I'm going to have a nice square here, and it's going to be about 10. I don't think I'll make it the length or the width of the entire garden here. I think I'm going to stop right there where I've got it, but I'm going to square it off there, square it off over here, so I'll end up having about 20 by 15 maybe um, to plant corn in this year. So, Cool, cool. Right now I'm going to till up the part that I've already done since my rototiller is out here. And uh, so that earth's getting loosened up a little bit. So have fun gardening. It's the Imperfect Gardener. Having a great day out getting the garden ready.